So, Palm Sunday. We hold our crosses, we shout, we sing God's praise. Some years ago, 2008, the internet tells me, the BBC put on a drama of Holy Week. It was called The Passion, and I remember how it began. The actor, Joseph Moore, was perched on an animal, which could have been a donkey or a colt, I can't remember which, travelling into Jerusalem. Ordinary people were shouting, cutting down shrubbery, tearing off their clothes and throwing them in front of this animal, and Jesus was receiving the praise of everyone around. There was a carnival atmosphere. It was party time. It was a bit chaotic, to be honest. On the other side of the city, James Nesbitt, playing the part of Pontius Pilate, at the head of thousands of Roman soldiers. They were marching in time, a disciplined force, coming to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, when so often there was trouble in this annoying, rebellious part of the empire. They were ready to re-establish order, ready to deal with precisely the kind of trouble that might have been brewing on the other side of the city. You knew, just as the camera switched from one scene to another, that there was going to be a clash between one side of the city, the Roman army, hard-faced, disciplined, determined to put down any kind of unrest. And the joyous, exultant and noisy crowds welcoming Jesus. People were on the streets. Demonstrations had begun. Things could get ugly here. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was not a chaotic, unplanned, impromptu event. It's all been carefully thought out and prepared. Acquiring the cult. Looking like the Messiah who's been prophesied and promised. And the people recognise the signs. Hosanna, they cry with excitement and hope. Hosanna, save us. That's what it means. Save us, Hosanna. They recognise Jesus as the one to save them. Perhaps precisely from the Romans who are advancing on the other side of the city. Save us. This is our King, the Son of David, one of us. The message is clear. Our King has arrived. It's an open act of rebellion and defiance. And whether or not the Romans were arriving exactly at that moment on the other side of the city, those who gathered round Jesus knew that that's what happened every Passover. Roman soldiers on the streets, ready to push them around and insult them. It's a continually irksome reminder of their inferior status in the empire. Just for the moment, though, they can rejoice. Celebrating the arrival of their Messiah. I wonder if some Jews were dragged out of their homes and made to stand on the streets as the Roman army arrived, a crowd summoned by force who didn't want to be there. And if there were, would they have prepared, been preferred to have been welcoming Jesus, even if that meant risking their own lives in doing so? Was it so necessary for Jesus to enter Jerusalem in this way? Why did he go out of his way to attract attention? To accept and welcome the praise and acclamation? To put his followers in such danger? Why was it that praise and jubilation was so important? In the following week, Jesus doesn't live in the shadows anymore. His ministry is public now, open, defiant, challenging both the Jewish and the Roman authorities. Praising Jesus as king becomes something which is necessary. It has to be. This is the time. Praise, an acclamation of who Jesus is, is resistance to the forces that are ranged against him. 
When I was part of an ecumenical charismatic community in Northern Ireland in the 1980s, we thought a lot about appropriate ways to resist the powers of evil. Evil was so apparent in that beloved country at that time. And praise was right at the heart of resistance to it. In praise, God's power, God's lordship, God's authority were acknowledged over our own lives, yes, but perhaps more importantly, over the situation where violence and hatred appear to take grip of people. And evil existed in communities even despite individual preferences and desires. Praising God was our way of reasserting God's sovereignty. And it was more than our words. The activity was, we believed, effective in the spiritual realm as well. So I could advocate a time of praise as a way of lifting our spirits, a better cure for feeling low than all the things we're told to do, like a good night's sleep or going for a walk and so on. But this is about more than our well-being. It's even more important than that. Praising God is necessary for the sake of our world, a resistance to evil. How you do it doesn't matter. Reading the Psalms, one gets the impression that Jewish worship was often uh, noisy. Lots of movement, dancing, processing, banging things. Quiet ways are also available, um, even actions. Many Christians have experienced the joy of simple actions done for God. Cleaning the car, even, or the, or the house. Praise in the common things of life. It's goings out and in. Praise in each duty and each deed, however small and mean. Proclaiming God as Lord. Praising God for being God is more than thanking God for what we've received, because that's limited by our gratitude and our capacity to receive. But praising God is unlimited because God is unlimited. So how to begin? Many of the Psalms of praise begin with encouragements to praise. Let us come, come, let us praise the Lord. Uh, Psalm 118 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. An encouragement and a reason to praise. And then more encouragement. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. So you could find a hymn, look up the words on the internet if you can't remember them, and try singing it at full strength. I used to find the car very good for this, but you know, you can find somewhere to do that. In time, you might find your own words or praise beyond words, speaking in tongues or being silent in God's presence. Say the name of Jesus. Find ways to do the everyday tasks of life so that the Lord is enthroned on the praises of his people. Fill Thou my life, O Lord my God, in every part with praise, that my whole being may proclaim thy being and thy ways. Amen.